Hi, uh, good morning everyone. This is your instructor and host for today's meeting. Uh, we will be discussing about MB300, which would be talking about Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations Core. So before we start working with the event, uh, just a quick check over the chat that everybody can hear me loud and clear and can see the screen which I'm sharing. Your answers on the chat. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for quickly confirming the same. So let's start working with the session, which was going to be MB300, talking about Microsoft Dynamics 365, Finance and Operations, Core Configurations, along with the core system components. So uh, today's I'll be your instructor, and being 18 plus years into the industry, I studied myself with Microsoft Dynamics AX, very old release of that slowly and gradually moving to AX version 2, 3, 4, 2009, 2012, R2, R3, and then finally structuring myself with D365 from last couple of years. At the same point of time, we've got some business applications where I'm working up, which involves Microsoft Dynamics 365 customer engagement. Some of the sideline technologies include SharePoint, uh, Visual Studio, Microsoft Azure Cloud, where I'm already working as part of my technology exposures down there. So as far as some of my certifications are concerned, I'm already certified in, in my customer engagement track, whether they are some of the associate as well as my expert certifications down there. I am certified on finance and operations on a couple of tracks, both functionals and technicals. And being an MCT, uh, I'll be your instructor talking about some of the official concepts, official curriculums, what we will be discussing as part of this, uh, this course down there. Okay, so let us quickly discuss about what we would be discussing as part of our course agenda down there. So the course is structured itself into 14 different modules, what we would be covering over a span of three days down there. The very first module, which is gonna talk about getting started with Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations in terms of some of the key terms we would be discussing, the LCS portal, some of the user navigations and all, we would also be discussing about getting started with lifecycle services in module number two today, which would majorly be talking about what LCS service is, what is my LCS portal, how can I start working over there through the entire life cycle of the project, whether it's from creation of the project's perspective, moving to managing that project, managing the environments associated with that, working up with different methodologies and business process modelers. And we would be discussing the same in module number three in detail, talking about using LCS services to design and plan your project accordingly. Module number four would be talking about what different reporting and analytics capabilities the module provides in terms of whether it is an SSRS report, whether it's a report generated by management reporter or a Power BI integration or Microsoft Office integration within the product itself, we would be discussing the reporting capabilities which are offered with Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. At the same time, module number five is talking about building and testing some mobile apps. So being a Dynamics 365 consultant, uh, we are responsible for making the end user's experience seamless in terms of accessibility and user friendliness over the mobile app provided by Microsoft and how we can further create different mobile apps and publish them for the end users. At the same time, module number six is going to talk about creating, maintaining, and using workflows. What are the workflow capabilities which are coming up with Dynamics 365? How can we start using them? How can we start utilizing them, creating and configuring them from scratch if required? At the same time, module number seven would talk about setting up and configuring the legal entities. So in terms of previously till AX 2009, we used to call them companies being rebranded in the, into the term called legal entities from 2012 onwards, what these are, where we can find them, how can we create them and how can we configure them, whether there are some company specific features, whether there are some uh, geographically space specific fee features and functionalities, we would be discussing some of those as part of this module. 
Module number eight would be talking about managing users and security. So as we know, for every application, user security is one of the prime configurable area where we need to configure the security based on the user requirements down there or the end user roles down there. So we would be discussing what security roles are, how do are I configure my duties and privileges in association of security roles to, to fulfill the security architecture requirements for the end user or the customer. At the same point of time, module number nine talks about performing some of the personalizations. How does that work into the system? How do we start utilizing that? At the same time, we talk about implementing common integration features. What are the major integration areas we can talk about whether it's a configurable integration with almost no code required or whether it's an integration which requires code writing where you would be involving your technical consultants or the developers to perform those integrations, writing middlewares, writing extension codes down there. At the same time, module number 11 talk about data and migration and migrating the data down there. So in the previous releases of Dynamic ERP, Microsoft used to have Dynamics Data into Import and Export Framework. So we used to have that DIXF framework down there and that's been integrated with 2012 with the initial release being shipped in 2012 R3 as the default data import export mechanism and further fine-tuned and enhanced in Dynamics 365 which we would be talking about and what should be your data migration strategies whether it's the whole transactional data import into the system or we are talking about only the opening closing balances and the open transactions what should be your customers strategy and how do we achieve that at the same time, data management workspace will help you creating import and export projects down there. Data coming up from different sources altogether, moving to staging versus the, the light tables, the production tables down there. Then we would be talking about performing the UATs, the user acceptance testing. How do you configure those working up with some of the UAT tools down there and where the UAT needs to be completed before marking the environment and requesting production system from Microsoft before fulfilling that checklist. Module number 14 would be the final module on day three, which would be talking about preparing to go live once all these things are completed. So we are starting up from the very beginning, moving all the way down to the go live best practices down there. Now, considering the same thing, the first five modules down here is what we are creating on the very first day that's going to be today which will involve module number one two three four and five the next five modules six to ten down there we are covering tomorrow that's going to be our second day and module number 11 to module number 14 is going to be friday that's going to be d03 what we would be covering as part of this particular program at the same point of time, if I move in here, what you will get at the end of this particular session and what would be the, uh, the major things down there. So the very first thing is the official curriculum. So you're involving yourself, you're enrolling yourself in MB300, the event from us, and that would be having a, a MB300 official curriculum, an ebook down there. Let me quickly do one thing over here. I'm gonna copy a URL and let me have it to the chat to everyone, which will give you access to this MB300 down there. So let me just ensure everyone's selected down here and let me paste it. So what I just did guys, I sent a chat message to everyone, which is a URL for a secure blob down there. By clicking on that, you will be able to download the ebook associated with MB300. That is the very first course and curriculum we are talking about in here. The second one, you would be getting the practice quizzes that will help you understand the technology better. Inside the ebooks itself, at the end of every module, we do have some of the good questions, number of questions talking about that concept. And at the end of the training, I'll also share you a couple of more practice quizzes down there at the same time. Third one, we would be having our completion certificate at the end of the session. You will be having an uh, evaluation, the course eval survey. Make sure you fill up that and on the basis of that, you will be having your completion certificate from, uh, from GTEC Learn Path there. 
and you do have the practice labs over here so i believe uh, someone from the team must already have sent you the labs url over your email the labs url is taking you to the labs which you'll be working so these labs are active for next three days for you and they are 24 by 7. you can access them anytime from anywhere using any browser if you'd like to have labs for a longer duration, you can always get them from labshosting.com and you can pretty much have those labs on daily or monthly basis down there. Important thing apart from that, only this specific session uh, is, is not getting recorded because of various reasons down there, but that's fine. You're already joining that up in here. So let's take a look on how you would be working up on hands-on labs access. So you need to log into your labs portal. So in, in your email, what you have received, there should be a labs URL, which will take you to your labs portal down there. And then you need to enter your user ID, password credentials, and you will be directly getting into your Microsoft labs access down there. So let me take a look, let me take you there. How does the lab access actually work? How do we start utilizing them and you using the same lab accesses at the same time? For that, I'm taking you to my browser over here. Let me quickly take you in there. For this particular event, all the labs are distributed from our West Coast Data Center in US down there. Let me tell you how will you be connecting to that. You, you need to go to West Coast or GTEC Learn. It's hosted over HTTPS. So when you're at West Coast or GTEC Learn, you would be getting yourself into this particular login page and that login page, you'll be having the credentials over there. For this particular training, the credential shared with you is gonna be events.mb300, events-mb300 at gtechlearn.com, provided by the password down over here, which is available on your email. The moment you click on that login ID password, it will take you to connect to your virtual machine and this will be the place where you need to connect yourself to this virtual machine down there in terms of how you'll be connecting and, and utilizing that VM. So for this one, everybody's having a student underscore a unique number with the username and the password. In my case, let me quickly log in as administrator down there. Let me just do that. I'm logging in as administrator. Give me a second. Right, let me key in my password over here real quick. All right, so I am currently logging in. Now, a couple of things, guys, before we move further to the next concept and start discussing about, once you are successfully connected to your lab, important thing, some of you might be seeing that the labs access are a little bit slow to you. That is not because the machine is slow. That is in fact the location from where you're pretty much launching these labs. As I've told you, these labs are hosted at West Coast Data Center in US. So depending on your geographical location, you might be facing a latency issues down there. Usually uh, when you enroll in any of our regular trainings, the lab accesses are provided to you in a dedicated manner and from the data center, which is nearest to you for this webinar, promotional webinar. So just to show you as far as this VM configuration goes on, that's comparatively high when I talk about having that virtual machine listed in here. If I show you the performance options down there, that's a staggered 20 cores down there. I've got uh, 16 different cores over here. I've got 128 gig of memory associated over here. Usually in all of our events, all these accesses, all these lab accesses are one per participant. They are always dedicated. In this specific event, since they are promotional events, a zero cost events, so this lab is shared among users. So if I'll see on the users tab, I'll see pl pretty much plenty of users connected. Some are disconnected, you can see them. So we are actually working in a shared environment. So working in a shared environment can be great sometimes when you're talking about team events or, or pretty much utilizing the VMs as a team down there, or they could be frustrating sometime when uh, we are overlapping each other's work. So I'll ensure we are not overlapping each other's work. We are following some of the best practices in terms of how we should be utilizing that. But I'll come back to this particular area. 
and explain you later step by step how we should be doing them in a best practices manner. Important thing, once you are logged in to, the, to your labs down there, there would be an icon for D365 home and there would be a text file for D365 user details. So if you double click, you'll be on Dynamics 365 Home, which is taking you to the login page for D365 portal. In my case, it automatically logged me in and I'm already logged in uh, and you would be seeing the default dashboard of Dynamics 365 over here. In your case, guys, um, you would be if you would be asked for the credentials to be provided down there they are available on the text file right available so it's the same which are available on your email as well event-mb300 at gtechlearn.com with the password provided that will help you taking to your labs portal explaining and understanding how the machine structured so it's a single on-prem hosted vm which we are utilizing for this promotional event for the lab access purposes uh, you would be having all the labs and all those details and i'll, I'll be providing you all those things down there uh, while uh, working with the program so let me take you back to my powerpoint presentation over here this screen was talking about how we would be accessing our hands-on labs down there so that was the very first thing in terms of a course overview, the course structured. So once again, it is a three days program. We are covering 14 different modules in a span of three different days. Module number one to five is gonna be covered on day one. The module number six to 10, we would be covering tomorrow. And module number 11 to 14, we would be covering on Friday. That's what the course schedule is along with your instructor's introduction. Now, before we start working with the very first module, which would talk about the overview and navigational overview, it would be really great for me to understand the kind of audience I'm having in this particular event. For that, I'm gonna launch one poll over to the Zoom meeting, which will help me understand the level of the audience, your technology awareness, your prime reason for, for joining this particular event, along with some of the inputs down there. So let me quickly launch the poll now. You should be seeing the poll in front of you. Let's answer that. And just in case you're not seeing the poll, you're joined from the web browser, feel free to introduce yourself over the chat. So let me quickly launch the poll here which will help you answering those questions.